Who was here last Tuesday? Oh, isn't the message great? Again, uh, we had a message, uh, Pastor Craig's visit us. It was awesome. He was in the book of Romans. So what I'm going to do today, I'm just going to do a recap. I'm going to highlight some points that we could take to our group. And as we expand our group, you know, kind of bring it more to life. So uh, I want to make sure that I don't spend too much time. Uh, again, today is investing into relationship. One of the things that I love about men's life here, you know, we build relationships. Uh, that's what we encourage men to always go to the group time, get to know brothers. You'll see that, you know what, we all face the same trials and struggles. And it's beautiful. As the word says, as iron sharpens iron sword, brothers sharpens each other. So I encourage you guys again, man, continue to come, uh, get connected, open up in the group time with the leaders. Uh, so after, after the recap, there's going to be announcements. So uh, make sure that uh, you guys don't rush out real quick. I want to make sure you get updated on all the announcements. Uh, again, welcome for those first-timers. Uh, Men's Life welcomes you. So again, we were in Romans chapter 5. If you guys want to open your Bible, I'm going to do a real quick recap. Again, I'll highlight some points that I think were really important. Uh, the most of you guys probably took notes, and the Holy Spirit highlight different points for you. Uh, again, uh, I pray that you will share them in the group time. So again, as we again go back to Romans 15, we're going to read from 14. I'm sorry, Romans 15, chapter 15, we're going to start from verse 14. But let's pray. God, again, we thank you for tonight. We thank you, Father, and knows many of us probably have challenges today. Many of us, Father, went through some ups and downs, but yet, Father, we thank you, Father, for you allow us to be here. Father, I know sometimes we fight a battle, but, Father, your word reminds us that the battle is already won. And we thank you, Father, we're here because we walked in victory. And I pray even now, Father, as we go into your word, Father, again, I just pray that your Holy Spirit would just speak. Father, many are here, Father, in need of your words, your encouragement. And I pray, Father, that the man, Father, would not leave here the same way they came in, but renew and strengthen to know, Father, you're still in control. You're still sitting on the throne, Father. Bless us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So we see in chapter 14 that the Apostle Paul has been exerting God's people in Rome towards unity, which is an important thing in the body of Christ. One of the things here in the church we see here that you know what Pastor Chad always pushing to get involved because we know as we come, a church, is, a church that is united is powerful. And we see here that Paul didn't want God's beloved people to be distracted with non-essential things that don't matter. And I love it. I see as Pastor Chris says, Paul was all about the gospel. He didn't want to be distracted by the things that did not matter. And I love here, as I was reading, you know what, sometimes we could become like the people in Rome. We could get distracted and start worrying about little things that don't really matter. I was sharing with the group, uh, the group time that I remember the first time um, Pastor Chet was praying, uh, as I, was, I closed my eyes, but I opened it back up, and I knew he was praying, but when I opened up, he was, his eyes were open. And I don't know if that, that distracted me. I was like, is he praying? With his eyes open? And, and it distracted me, like, literally. And I was like, okay, that's weird, but okay. You know? You know, again, and we could get distracted for little things like that. And that's what Paul here, he was, he does. don't get distracted. Don't, don't worry about the little things, you know, because it's all about the gospel. You know, there's a story, I don't know if you guys heard about a lady. They went to the pastor and, and told the pastor, I'm leaving the church. And I don't know if you heard this story, but it's, it was pretty cool. I heard it a long time ago, and it, and it came back to me. It says, a lady went to the pastor and said, I won't be attending church anymore. He said, may I ask why? She said, I see people on their cell phones during their service. Some are gossiping. Some just ain't living right. They're all just hypocrites. The pastor got silent, and he said, okay. But can I ask you to do something before you make your final decision? She said, what is that? He said, take a glass of water and walk around the church two times. And don't let any water fall off the glass. She said, yes, I can do that. She came back and said, it is done. He asked her three questions. Did you see anybody on their phone? Did you see anybody gossiping? Was anybody living wrong? She said, I didn't see anything because I was so focused on the glass. 
so the water wouldn't fall. He told her, when you come to church, you should be just that focused on God so that you don't fall. That's why Jesus says, follow me. He did not say follow Christians. And I love this. It says, don't let says, don't let your relationship with God be determined by how others relate with God. Let it be determined by how focused you are in God. And you know what? And it reminded me that when I was reading this, how Paul didn't want them to get distracted and to focus on what really matters, which is the good news, the gospel. You know, sometimes we could get distracted and things like that. Like the lady, you know what? Uh, <laughs> many, I hear stories. Why people don't bring their Bibles? They're on the phones, you know? I used to, I, I, people start getting distracted and they forget the message. You know, I remember coming to Mass, I was so distracted. I said, why Frank's always bringing his iPad? You know? <laughs> but it was funny because even Pastor Rob would give him a hard time. But listen, you know what? It's so beautiful. Sometimes, you know what? When we just focus on what really matters, we don't really let those things bother us. We come, we love on each other. And here, we're going to read in, uh, in verse 14. It says, so now I myself, I am confident concerning you, my brethren, that you also are, are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able to admonish one another. And I love to hear Paul, he saw the goodness in people in Rome. And the question I'm going to ask you, man, do we see the goodness of people when they come? I love it because Paul here, Paul spoke, did not see the people in Rome as new or old, how old were they in the Lord? Because he knew that all were precious in the sight of God. We are righteous because of what Jesus did at the cross. Not for what we did or do. See, Paul knew that, you know what, no matter if there were new believers, old believers, you know he knew they were all precious in the sight of God. You know, last Sunday was so beautiful, Pastor Chet, you know, how he was talking about that, that, that special touch from God, right? Amen. I love that. You know what, and again, one of the things that I love, uh, as I come to church, I always pray in the morning, I say, Lord, no, let me see the goodness in people. Let me love on people. I don't want to miss opportunity. And you know what, for the glory of God, you know what, here's a brother that uh, I met uh, on Sunday. You know, we share, and I don't want to embarrass him, but, you know, he's here, and I love it. Because you know what, that's what it is. When you see the goodness of God, you love on people, you know, you welcome them. I didn't ask him how long you, well, if you, it didn't really matter if he was here long. No, you know, when I found out he was new, I said, welcome. You know, it was that person who touched, you know, and I know he loved it because, you know what, he's here. I invited him. I said, hey, come to her Tuesday night. He goes, I'll be there. You know, and our brother here, is, he's here for the first time. And we want to tell you, welcome, Brother Daniel, you know, for Dan, you know, and I know that he was looking, but I love it. I love it. That personal touch that Pastor Chet was talking about, you know, when sometimes, you know, when we come to church, you know, we're so used to just focusing on those that have been coming for a long time. And I encourage you, as Paul said, you know, see the goodness in people when they come in. Because, you know, people are coming into the church. And to me, when I see people in church, I know, man, they're in need of God as I am. And I say, you know what? And I know they, they're in need of encouragement like I am. So as you see the goodness in people, hear Paul, I love it, you know, he saw the good in people. And again, going back to the message, the person in the touch of God. And that's what it is. Just like God had the person encounter with that touch, you know, make sure that we continue to do that. Because again, we're, we're a call. And like I said, one of the things Paul was sharing, that one of the things he was trying to make sure the people in they focused that, listen, we need to be united. We need to be united. And I love Pastor Chris. He gave us some points. His title was Keys to an Impactful Christian Life. And I love it because he focused on, on, on verse. I think he spent most of his time because he was running out. But it's good to focus on verse 15. Let's read it. He said, Nevertheless, brethren, I have a writing more boldly to you on some points as reminder, reminding you because of the grace given to me by God. Again, Romans chapter 15, verse 15. And I love it here. His first point was, his first point was, it's all about the grace of God. And what is the grace of God? It's undeserving love, right? The grace of God is undeserved favor. Grace is God choosing to bless us rather than curse us as our own sin deserves. And, you know, I love how he focused on that, the grace of God. 
Ephesians 2.8 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from, from yourself. It is the gift of God. And as I was reading, the Lord took me back to Genesis. And, and as I was reading, I said, man, where grace began, it began, grace began in the Garden of Eden. When God killed an animal to cover the sins of Adam and Eve, God could have killed the first humans right there for their disobedience. But rather than destroying them, he chose to make a way for Adam and Eve to be right with them. And I love that. We see the grace of God. That you know yet, you know what, our sin, our disobedience, God gives us the opposite. We know the story of Pastor Chris. He mentioned when he was going to go to a mission, right? You know, he went to, uh, I think it was a mission. And I love the story, right? I see he got up in the morning, devotion, his prayers, yet his son got up so fast, he didn't even pray. And yet, I'm going to tell the story, and yet, you know, he, they were driving, and as they were driving, you know, he had, uh, uh, he had this car full of people as they were going to the airport, and his son, after I said an hour drive, he says, Dad, I forgot my guitar. Remember, he was a worship singer, so he needed his guitar, so he said he, he was upset. You know, he was upset, and the first thing we think, like, man, you know what, I got to think, he, he probably was saying, you know what, this is why you need to get up early and pray, this is why you need to, but yet, he did the right thing. He, Chris, Pastor Chris, he did the right thing, but yet his son did the opposite. And we see the story, right, that, you know, there was, uh, as he went to the airport, uh, the intercom, they say they were looking for somebody to give up their seat, and he took the opportunity to tell Pastor, hey, this is from the Lord. And I love what Pastor says, get away from me, yeah, because we intend to get upset. You know, you messed up, and yet, you know, you don't deserve, you deserve a bad treatment. That's what we, that's what we are. We, we, we want to treat people the way they, they, we think they've been deserved for messing up. But again, the story ends, I love it, I'm not going to tell everybody. And finally, he took the seat, you know, he went to the next, he gave up his seat, he went to the next trip. He took the next airplane, and, and as pastor got there, you know, the son got there, and I missed it. I, Probably Mr. Liver, when he said that Pastor Chris, he went on the plane, and it was a horrible trip. He said the plane was bad. He said, and the, even the, uh, the pilot said, man, this is the worst ride ever. So he was in the baddest, but worstest uh, 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 airplane ride. And yet, you know what? As he got there, he saw his son coming with a big smile. After he picked him up, first class, and his son goes, Dad, I, I got the first class. You know, I got ice cream. And again, and, 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 and he was upset. Like, hey, God, I mean, come on. You know, I did the right thing, and yet this, my son did the opposite, but yet you gave him all these blessings. And I love what he said. You know, that is the grace of God. We are giving what we don't deserve. And that's what he said. We, we, that grace was given by, and again, it's, and it's, it's not from yourself. It's a gift from God. See, we need grace, but also we need to give grace to others. See, Jesus told his disciples, freely, you have received freely, I give, Matthew 10, 8. Just as you have received the gracious favor of God, now let God use, use you to show his grace to others. Because sometimes we don't show it. We show the opposite. And, and again, people see like, man, uh, you know, uh, I don't even think he's a believer. We got to remember, it's all about grace. And I love what Pastor Chris, Pastor Chris says. He said, if you don't walk in grace, which is forgiveness, you walk in slavery and bondage. And it's so true. And it's so true. One of the things I think the greatest power Jesus possesses, as I read the Old and the New Testament, we see God's power in the beginning of the, New, in the New Testament. We see it. He displays it, right, with the fire, with the parting of the Red Sea. But when we go to the New Testament, you know, we see God, carnated man, being Jesus. I love it. At the end, we see what he said. He says, after being treated bad, he says, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. And to me, that was powerful. Because, you know, one of the these days, one of the things people our heart to do is to forgive. We want to live in that bondage of, of, of our sin and not forgiving. And I love the story he said about Johnny and Sally, right? You guys, I don't know if he was here. You know how Johnny went to go visit grandma and he had his lens shot and he was trying to, you know, like remember back then, you try to see if you could hit the can and he didn't have good aim, so, but he saw grandma's duck and he said, let me see if I could hit it. And what happened, he did it, he killed grandma's duck. 
And Sally was there. He saw, Sally saw him. And, and, and then it's funny, the story goes where, you know, that Johnny was under the slavery of Sally. The story says that, you know, us, uh, Grandma told Sally, Sally, can you help me wash the dishes? And Sally goes, oh, no, Johnny's going to do the dishes. And they, Sally went to Johnny and said, remember, you killed the duck. And I love it because you know what? He knew how to grab it. And, it says, and the story begins that the grandpa said, hey, let's go, let's go fishing. But the grandma says, Sally needs to stay to help me make dinner. And Sally goes, no, no, Johnny will stay. Johnny will make, help you cook dinner. And, and Sally goes, remember, you killed the duck. And it, the story says that he kept doing it until finally he was fed up. He went, he confessed to grandma. And grandma, what he told him, I said, Johnny, I already knew. I forgive you. And the grandma, and he goes, well, what? He says, yes, I just wanted to see how long you're going to be under slavery from Sally. And it's so true, you know, that we, because we don't want to come to God and ask for forgiveness, we stay in that bondage of slavery, of sin. And the enemy uses that. Your willingness to forgive, he said, is one of the greatest assets. One of Satan's tools he uses in your life is unforgiveness, which causes what? Bitterness, anger, but division. We know the Bible says in John 10, 10, he comes to what? Kill, steal, and destroy. But thank God for Jesus Christ, right? He comes to give us life and more abundantly. And that's the grace of God. And I love it again. That was the point too. I love it. You know, Pastor Craig said, you know, we need grace to give it to our kids, to our wife. It's so true. We need it. I was sharing the story. I'm not sure if I share it here with, with this group, or in my group, where <clears throat> my, my son, we had made a transition from schools. Uh, he was an A student. He was doing so good. But as soon as we did a transition from Hollywood to L.A., his grace just dropped. And we didn't understand why he was failing. So we went to the teacher conference, and the teacher said, your son is failing. And, of course, Mama, she is on top of my boy. And she was upset. She was mad. She was like, I need to take away this from him. I need to. And I could see Mama was so mad. And I remember we got home. I remember that as we got home, my son was like, he, he was like sad. But my wife, she was mad. She's like, can't believe you're failing. Can't believe you're doing this. And I remember, I remember God goes, he goes, Albert, give him grace. You know, give him the opposite we deserve. And I remember I called him to the room. I called my son to the room. And I told my wife, you know, let me talk to him. And as soon as I closed the door, my son started crying. He goes, I let you down. And I go, okay, son, it's good that you acknowledge that. But what we do next is what's going to determine your future. I go, you know what? We're going to pray that God will help you in whatever is why ever you're failing. At it. And maybe it could be the transition you can't catch up. But you know what, son? Let's pray for God to help you. And I remember as we pray, you know, I, we pray, pray with them. She was crying. And from there, man, was sister, he just started having Good grades. But I love it how I did not give him what he deserved. I could have said, you know what, for, for, for failing, you're gonna, I'm going to take this. Yet I loved on him. And that's what God does to us. But one of the things is that we have to acknowledge that we fell short. And that's why I love my son. He's like, I let you guys down. And I said, good, I'm glad you know that. Now, let's move on. And now, pray, you know, I think he was like, 12 years old, but now, praise God, you know, he's 18, he, he went to uh, uh, UC San Diego, he's doing pretty good, praise God, you know, but again, that's what it is when we are called, praise God, amen. <laughs> See, I could have, that day, put him even more down, my wife was already like, she have seen it, and if I would have come, but I remember Jesus says, give him grace, and that's what it is, that's the love of God, but I love it, going back to forgiveness. You know, if you don't walk in grace, you don't walk in forgiveness. Point two. He wrote, it's all about the gospel. Let's continue reading. It says here in verse um, 16. 
that I might be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God. That the offering of the Gentiles may be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Second point, he said, it's all about the gospel, which is the good news. And again, going back to Paul, you know, he wanted to make sure that God's people in Rome, they focus, they focus, focus that it's all about grace, but also it's all about the gospel. And the gospel is the good news, message that mankind can be saved from penalty of their sins and receive life. In heaven, we got through <clears throat> to death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Man, that's an announcement you can afford to ignore. It. We have to let them. Let them know the gospel. You know, right now, we're, we're going to prepare uh, to do three, uh, three outreaches coming up. And man, we have to. We have to go out there and preach the gospel. Because one of the things is, listen, you know what? The gospel came to us. But it not came to us so we could just put it away and kind of be, no, no. It came to us so it could continue to go. I love that. What is it when we do the candles? Uh, what is it during Christmas? How You turn on one candle and then it passes on. And that's what it is. That fire in us. That we have to. One of the things the gospel is not, gospel is not a religion. It's a relationship with Christ himself. Being a Christian is, ask, is asking Christ to come alive inside of you. The Bible says, but as many as received them, to them he gave them the right to become children of God. To those who believe his name. Man, the gospel. Paul here in certain edition, it's all about the gospel. Which is the good news. And I pray, man, I know last, uh, last outreach, I was a little bit disappointed. I know most of you guys probably work Saturdays, you know, but, I mean, I should have this kind of manner here going out, ready to go share the gospel. Why, we want, well, why I want you guys to be inside? Because I believe as Romans, I love Romans 1.6, what does it say? For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Amen. For it is the power, listen, the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes. And this is what I told the man. And again, not putting men out there, we're not here, and maybe you were working, but if you were not working, well, I'm going to tell you directly. Listen, man, if you're not having victory in your life, it's because maybe you don't believe that the gospel is power to salvation. Because if you believe, let me tell you, you will be here and say, you know what, I believe because what is done in my life. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of salvation to all those who believe. And let me tell you, man, you're going to be blessed when you come with that. Not only be blessed in a way where you're going to have victory in your life because you believe in that gospel. You believe there is power. But what we don't believe, that's what we don't have victories in our own personal life. Man, pray that you believe that it's all about the gospel. Point number three. As we read verse, continue verse, um, I'll be read 17. It says, therefore, I have reason to glory in Christ Jesus and the things which pertain to God. What was point number three? You guys remember? We do it all for the glory of God. We do it all for the glory of God. I love how he says, Pastor says, we're not here just to have fun. It's true. <laughs> I love how he said that. We're not here just to have fun. We are here to glorify God. And that's one of Pastor Chet's, right? He loves to use that. Glorifying God together. One of the things I used to tell my son as he got, as he got accepted into UC San Diego, I go, son, just to let you know, you're not here really for your career. You're here to glorify God. And if you have that mindset, that mentality, everything will go well. But if you're there because you think that, you know what, you need to, and I get it, you know, you want a career, but you know what? If your mentality is that you know you're there to glorify God, God would open doors. God would open doors. And let me tell you something. His mindset, he knows that he's there to glorify God. 
I remember that uh, he took a Bible verse to his bed. Uh, he has it a frame. Uh, he has frames of Bible verses. And one of his roommates, uh, he's a foreign student from China. He came and he saw his, uh, he has a verse, I think it was Jeremiah. I can't remember the top of my head. It was Jeremiah. So he read it and he goes, oh, that's a pretty cool quote. And he goes, no, it's not a quote. It's actually a Bible verse. And his roommate goes, oh, I heard about the Bible. Back in China, we're not allowed to read about Christianity or the Bible. And then he goes, oh, I would like to go one day to church. And I remember my son called me right away, dad, dad, my roommate. He said he would like to go to church. I remember uh, I told my wife, babe, we have to go. And it was a Sunday, I couldn't make it, so I told the pastor, pastor, I'm not going to be here Sunday because I think we have a mission. And we went, we took his roommate. Not only did we take one, but we took both of his roommates. And as we took him to the church, I used to serve in St. Marcos. You know, Pastor Greg was giving the message of the gospel, and his roommate accepted Jesus. And I was like, praise God. And as he accepted, so beautiful, amen, praise God. You know, we had communion, and, and I was like, is he going to take communion? And he did. And I was like, praise God. You know, of course, you know, you, you don't see the change right away. You know, a week passed. And I'm hey, make sure you encourage, you know. I mean, for him, he's still new, you know. So I go, make sure you love on him, encourage him. And, and then he finally, the roommate came into my son. He goes, hey, um, I want to buy me a Bible. You know, what kind of Bible should I buy? So as soon as my son goes, dad, dad, he wants to buy a Bible. So I go, well, son, we're all going to invest into the kingdom of God. And this is how you invent. We're all going to pitch in and buy him a Bible. And I remember we all pitch in and we bought him a Bible and, and I love it. I think last week we talked and he said, Dad, he said he loves his Bible. He said that as he reads it, it's like he's becoming smarter. <laughs> and that's good. That's wisdom. The Word of God gives you that knowledge, that wisdom. So again, man, if you're not reading your Bible, mm, to know. <laughs> Listen, I love it. I love it. And that's the mentality. Listen, let me tell you something. If, if you're in your, in, a, in your job, wherever you are, you're there for the glory of God. To make sure that the name of Jesus is being known. And sometimes, yes, it might cost you. But you know what? At least the, the seed was planted. Because we know the word says that it will continue to be water. And God will make the growth. But also, we know that we glorify God. And this is the one where many of us probably are sometimes embarrassed to or even are ashamed to say when we go through trials, or we go through pains and suffering, but yet God delivers from, but yet we don't want to tell people. You know, we're, we, we, we do everything for the glory of God, no matter what it is. You know, I was talking to Brother uh, Andy. He's here. I was surprised he had surgery. Uh, you know, he's here. I was like, man, you're Superman because you're healing quick. But he was telling me, brother, man, as I was going through their pain, man, the nurses were coming in, and, and I was sharing the gospel. And I go, man, that's praise God, brother. You know, even in your midst of sorrow, what you're going through, you're still letting people know about Jesus. And I was reminded, the story of Lazarus. The Bible tells us that Lazarus' sickness is not unto death, but unto what? For the glory of God. And sometimes, man, most of us are here probably went through something like that. And we're staying quiet instead of letting people know what God did. And 20, I think it was 2022 or 2021, can recall. My sister, um, she, she got really bad. She got really sick. And to the point of death. And I remember that it, my, my, her husband came to her house to talk about if we're going to donate her organs. And I, how are you so sure she's already going to die? She goes, the doctor said there's no hope. She's losing weight or her organs. She's, her organs are failing. And I was like, man, Lord, I believe in your miracles, Lord. And you know, your faith gets strong, yes, but yet the enemy comes and he tries to destroy you, your faith. I remember my sister called me. And she was crying. She goes, well, our sister's dying. Our sister's dying. Can't believe it. And I go, sister, do you believe I could restore her? I can. I do believe it. Yeah, but you don't understand. That's it. Her organs all failing. The doctor said it, that there's no hope that she's, she's done. I go, as a sister, I believe in a God. 
that could restore her health. And I remember as I was going, it was, I was praying because, you know, again, we were hearing stories like she's not, there's no way she's going to come back. Or everything's fine in her body. And I remember that I went to a restaurant. I went to go uh, eat with a couple brothers. And I remember that there was a bird. You know, back uh, during COVID, they, people eat outside, right? And, and there was a canopy. We're eating underneath a canopy. And there was a bird inside the canopy going back and forth, back and forth. I think Derek was there, right? Yeah, brother Derek was there. And, his, and, his, and I was looking at the bird. I was like just going back and forth, back and forth. And then our, the one of, uh, the, there was a, um, a lady next door to us. She saw the bird and she goes, oh, we need to get the bird out. And I'm looking at her. She's trying to kind of get to help the bird get out because, you know, and finally the manager came and she told the manager, manager, you know, that bird, you know, um, he's, uh, uh, if we need to help him out. You know, uh, uh, and the manager goes, oh, don't worry about it. Eventually, he's going to get tired, and he's going to die. I was like, whoa, that was cool. That poor lady was like, no. And, and I was watching, and she turns around and looks at me, and, and I think Brother, Brother Louis, he goes, can you guys help me? And I'm thinking, all right, I have a sweater in me. If I hit him down, uh, maybe we can help him. But we're just looking, and I love Brother, Brother Louis. You know, if he's here, he tells me, he goes, nah, well, I'll just pray for that bird. If the Lord wants you to live, you'll let him live. And I was like, hmm, you're right. And I did a small prayer. I said, Lord, that bird's in your hands. But it's crazy how that lady, she's trying so hard to get the bird out. She fell, and she went, and she was, you could see she was all hurting down. And you could see her walking away, and I was like, wow, you know. And as soon as I saw her, I saw the bird go, whoop, and takes off. And I go, whoa, did you guys see that, guys? The bird just... And then the Lord gave me a message. See that lady? She left without hope. Because her hope is not in God. Yes, I, I have life and death in hands. I give who lives, who dies. All you have to do is do what you did. Just pray to me. I don't need your help. And I thought about it. If I would have hit that bird, I would have killed it myself. And God goes, I don't need your help, Papa. Just pray. Trust and believe. And it's so beautiful. In that moment, I said, Lord, my sister's life is in your hands. I believe. And I love it. She became a miracle for the glory of God. She, all her arrogance came back. And she is now, praise God. When she came back, she, right away, uh, uh, she started she started uh, uh, getting calls, like, why are you finding it? And they said, can you come speak? She started flying, speaking, you know, letting people know what Jesus did in her life. Listen, for the glory of God. And my point is, listen, man, God has done stuff in your life that we need to know. Men need to know. Even though if it is unto death. Things that sometimes we're ashamed to say. We're called to glorify God, man. In whatever situation we face. Man, I'm taking so long. Sorry about that. Again. Point number three, verse 19. In mighty signs and wonders, so I think I skip 18, let's go to 18. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me, in word and in deed. Pretty much he says, for I will not speak unless I believe of the power of the gospel that has transformed my life. Man, we glorify God through our testimonies. What God has done, that's what Paul said, I will not be speaking if, if, if they didn't happen to me. Verse 19. Sorry, let's go 18. For I will not dare to speak of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me, in word and deed, to make Gentiles obedient. 19. In mighty signs and wonders, by the power, by the, by the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and around all the Nicarium, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. And point number three, our power comes from God. The Holy Spirit is the one who provides the power. And I'll close because I know I have to go with the wrong points, but I pray the leaders have more in their notes. I remember when we did the Love Out Loud Outreach. 
It was so beautiful because my my mission was to to cook the hostage, just stay behind the grill while everybody go out and, and share the gospel. But God had a different plan. I remember that as I went there, our brother Rudy and his team said, hey, we don't have that many people. Can I come and join you guys? I said, sure. And then uh, I remember Rudy goes, I'll do the grill and you go out. I was like, okay, that wasn't the plan. But then he goes, well, that was God's plan. And I remember I said, God, empower me with your spirit. I empty myself. Use me. And it was so beautiful during the love allowed, man, how the Lord was using me so powerful, so mightily. It was so beautiful that I was amazed. People were, were giving the life to the Lord right there. You know, I was having connections with people. And I remember there was one where one of the ladies, uh, uh, she, there was a, a, a lady coming, and she tried to talk to her. And yet when she came to me, I t- she was able to stop and talk to me. She gave her life to Jesus. And the lady goes, Albert, what did you tell her? that She didn't. She ignored me. I said, all I shared was the gospel. And I, and, and I was like, and I remember that we were going back and forth. And now they were like, Albert, go get her. You know, like they thought I was this gospel preacher, you know, because people were responding. And then she came up to me, Albert, how did you do it? And I cry. <laughs> I go, man, it's not me. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. And all you have to do is ask for it. All you have to do is ask for it. And you'll see how God will use you. And man, I'm telling you, man, if you're afraid, I pray that you let the fear go and let faith activate. Because we are living in times where you know what God is going to, one day, we're going to face it. He's going to ask us, what did you do? Man, I pray that you will, will preach the gospel. That you believe, as Paul did, said in Romans, he said, that it is the power to salvation to all. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let's pray. God, I thank you again, Father, for, again, as we go back to this recap, Father, how it blessed me. I pray, Father, that as we go into a group time, Father, the man, Father, will be encouraged, Father. Not only to encourage, Father, by your grace, Father, with your undeserving love, Father, that you give us, but also to know, Father, Father, if we're here, it's because you're not done with us yet. And there's many people that need to listen to the good news. Many people need to listen of the testimonies in our life, Father. I pray the men here, Father, will go out, will rise and be light and be salt to all this community, Father. Again, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the men that are here, Father. I pray for those that are, are watching online, Father. I pray that they will also walk by faith. And, Father, that they will know, Father, that the gospel, it is the power to salvation to all who believe. Bless us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen.